this motion will eventually come forth after our worship time together. I just want to say right away so I don't forget later, Merry Christmas to everyone, and thank you for coming out again. <clears throat> I'm going to read a song in the hymnals. You will be using your hymnals tonight before we forget. So in the back of the chairs, there should be a hymnal for you. And uh, some of you might have to ask a neighbor behind you to grab a songbook for yourself. <clears throat> All right. So tonight... Page 183, you don't have to turn there, but I want to read this to you. Hear the story from God's word that kings and priests and prophets heard. They would, there would be a sacrifice, a, a sacrifice, and blood would flow to pay sin's price, precious lamb of glory. On the cross, God loved the world while all the power of hell were hurled. No one there could understand the one they saw was Christ the Lamb, precious Lamb of glory, love's most wondrous story, heart of God's redemption story of man, worship the Lamb of glory, Revelations 5.13, blessing and honor and glory and power unto the Lamb forever and ever. So tonight we get to start that story now, as we go through tonight, I don't want you to think of the service as I'm here for entertainment because you're not. If you're here tonight, you come to be, you come to be a part of worshiping our Creator and Savior. So, as we start the story, we'll start off in Isaiah, a couple scriptures before we start singing. Isaiah 7.14 this was written about 700 years before Christ was born. The Lord, whoops, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Micah 5, 2. And this was written about 800 years before Jesus' birth. It says, this is all the ESV, by the way. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is from, one is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old. From ancient days. And then to catch up on John, in the book of John, chapter 7, verse 45, it says this uh, 42 Has not the scripture said that the Christ comes from the offering of David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David was? Please take your hymnals and turn to page 217. We're going to sing the first three verses of Little Town of Bethlehem. Verse 3, 1, 3, and 4.
three verses. There shall call, they shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. Matthew verse 23 on page 229. O come, O come, Emmanuel. <laughs> You may stand on this verse, please, on this song. Please stand. seated.
All right. There's some, some scripture, some very familiar scripture that I want to share with you that's going to carry us on through the next few songs. So let's go ahead and stand for the reading of the scripture. We're looking at the very familiar passage in Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 9. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were fill, filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all in all the people. For unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there is with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Then verse 15, when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. Standing and turn to page 222. We three kings of Orient are. 
Page 211 in your hymnal. Luke 2.18, and, and all that heard, and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told to them. Page 211, I wonder as I wonder. Verses 1 through 3. to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Luke 2.14, all three verses on this one.
As we hear the beginning of the story of Christ coming to earth, a God taking on man's flesh and living among men to come, walk with men and women, and to sacrifice himself on a cross for us so we may have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ again. Praise God Almighty for that. And tonight again, you know, that, that sacrifice comes more towards Easter time is when we celebrate that. And tonight it's more focused on the birth of Christ coming to, to earth for man. If you turn to page 208, ring the bells. This gospel shall be preached in the world, the whole world. Matthew 26, 13. We're going to sing all the two verses on page 208, ring the bells. But on the second page, there's a part, the coda. In the second verse, we are not going to do that. I can't go that high. <laughs> but it is, a wonderful, it is a wonderful song. And my wife said we really need to do this song tonight. So, Lord, my prayer up to you is I hope you are blessed by this evening in this song. Amen. Please stand, by the way. Please stand. Please turn to page 201. Come all ye faithful on page 201. We'll sing verses, all three verses. Oh come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Psalms 95, 6.
be seated. At this time, we're going to take a short intermission, about three minutes. Uh, feel free to get up, walk around. And during this time, we're going to light our candles. And then when we start back up, please help yourself and grab a, a lit candle when you return to your seat when the intermission is just about over. Thank you. Candles. We're going to put the words up on the screen. And the three songs that we are going to be doing is Joy to the World. You can use the... the the songbook if you'd like, but uh, Joy to the World, and we're going to do all four verses, then we're going to do one verse of uh, Angels We Heard on High, the very first verse, and then we're going to end the singing portion of tonight's service with Silent Night, and we're going to do the first three verses on page 299. Uh, one thing I'm going to do, though, which is a little bit different, but when we start Silent Night, I'm going to help start it off. But then I'm going to relieve myself of my duties up here, and I'm going to come down there and join you as we sing Silent Night together. And then our pastor, Josh, will come up and, and finish off the service. All right? Sound like the plan? Okay. Uh, please rise. <clears throat> the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arms shall... Rule for him, Isaiah 40.10, joy to the world. <clears throat>
There was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God. Luke For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. But I wanted to spend the next couple minutes talking about John 3.16, and then conclude this service in prayer. And so, this verse makes some sense to us. There's some logic to this. God so loved the world. It makes sense that God loved the world because He created it. 
And since he created man in his own image, it's understandable that he would love us too. But why did he have to give his son? Have you ever thought about that? Uh, why did Jesus have to come to the earth to live, but not only to live, but to die? Why was that necessary for us today? And maybe, perhaps, Jesus came to do more than just forgive our sins and pay our debts. Certainly, he did that. Someone had to come to earth and defeat Satan and the demonic powers. Someone had to live a perfect life, devoid of any sin, in order to claim righteousness that exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, as we saw in the Sermon on the Mount this morning. Jesus gave himself freely. Satan did gain power over mankind. So I think, again, in part, the answer lies in the very beginning of Genesis. God created a perfect paradise, and Satan was able to deceive. Deceive, of course, as you know, Adam and Eve. And with the fall, the earth was no longer flawless. And because of sin, people were no longer able to be blameless before their creator. And Satan then gained the upper hand over mankind. So sin, creating this division between God and man. And because the wages of sin is death, Satan, who had the power of death, had us as sinners in his control. Jesus never sinned, though. And Satan lost his power. So this someone who had to come to earth to defeat Satan, someone had to live his life without sinning and make a way that we might be restored to our Creator. This someone is no other than Jesus the Christ. He took the form of a human, and including a nature which included temptations and sin. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he lived a completely victorious life. He overcame it all, making a way for us today to come to the Father to celebrate the Christmas gift. Hebrews 4.15 tells us that he was tempted in all points, just as we were, but yet he is without sin. And this means his flesh lived the same kind of life that we live today. The temptations were there. The despair was possible. And he faced every temptation and every trial by taking up his cross daily. He overcame this world. In doing so, he actually created a way for us to follow in his footsteps. So when Jesus hung on the cross and died, Satan thought that he had conquered Jesus. And because Jesus lived a perfect life of righteousness, he actually overcame Satan at the point where Satan thought there was no longer Jesus. Jesus rose again, proving that all the purpose of why he was here, the purpose of why we celebrate Christmas as Christians is true. And so today, there's everlasting life that we could sing about, we could rejoice, we could enjoy this Christmas season. And so with God's help, we can overcome the power of sin and Satan. With God's help, my flesh doesn't have to hold me back from a relationship with my Creator. And when I do this, I'm walking in the way that Jesus made a way that we can celebrate Him properly with proper worship. 
And so that's why we're here tonight, to see what Christmas means to us and to offer Him worship just as it's due Him. And so that's what Christmas means to me. And so I hope this year, 2020, as fun, as exciting as it is, we could end with a note of hope, of peace, of everlasting life, of love. And that's the message we carry to this dark world. Merry Christmas. Let's pray.